my Hey, welcome to another video from Old Guy Outdoors. Today we're going to talk about the Honda Pioneer 520. Uh, I've got a guy that's been using it and he's going to evaluate it and tell you what's good about it, what he doesn't like about it. Uh, he's going to give you the whole smear on what to do if you want to buy one of these. I'm going to introduce you to Mel and he's going to tell you about his uh, Honda Pioneer 520 side by side. Hello, my name is Mel, and you've probably seen me on most any post office wall. <laughs> but we're here today talking with the old guy who promotes these things and looks at these things and evaluates equipment and machinery. We ran into one another out here in the middle of nowhere, haven't figured that part out yet. <laughs> but but uh, I was kind of explaining to him. Why he needed this as a component to do the kinds of things that he's doing. Hey everybody, let's take a minute before we go any further and do me a big favor. Please share our videos, like our videos, big thumbs up, hit that little button right there, and subscribe to our videos with the bell notification that allows you to know when our next videos are coming out. So without further ado, Let's get on with the video. Okay, the validity of this little pioneer description and evaluation is something that's important from a user's perspective. I do not receive a nickel from this old guy here, Honda, or any part member that's on this motor, uh, motor machine. It is me just telling you, this is what happens, this is what you got, and this is what you're getting for your money. It's, I'm not a salesman. This particular machine is tried and tested and proven to be very effective and very worthy. So, uh, Mel, how old is it? What, what year this, is it? This model here is a 2020 Honda Pioneer 5, 520, like we were saying. And they've been out for a while, and I think they've made a few modifications on the newer ones. But you have to understand, you know, is this in your budget? And if you're going to talk about your budget, you're talking about around $10,000 to buy pretty much stripped. So you're going to put about another $2,000 in what you really need to enclose the thing for, you know, stormy weathers and other out wildlife conditions. So what is stripped? What, what does stripped it come with? Stripped means it will not come with a roof. It will not have a windshield. It will not have a winch. It will not have a back cover. All those things are critical. Without this back cover, you're going to eat dirt like a mule behind the last one in the line. So and the spare tire too, and, and, the, and the spare tire, and that's all add-ons. That's all add-on okay. in that rack. Now I also have a storage box in here, and you always need to be prepared for what's likely most to happen to one of these machines. Sure. And the greatest likelihood is you're going to blow a tire, or, okay. or flatten a tire right. on a rock or something like that. So in this box. You got to have your tire repair kit. I even have a, a pump in here, an air pump that is hooked to your socket inside the machine here, uh, a regular insert plug like cigarette lighter kind of thing that will pump it back up. But these are, are tubeless tires, so you just do the plug insert, drill a hole in the top of it, and fix it if it's a nail yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And also, you got to have a star wrench in here or a star lug wrench in here, plus a small jack a right. bottleneck jack to lift it well let's it look let's look at the vehicle and we'll look we'll start the front okay here's the here's the winch that we're talking we're talking about underneath the hood here 
which this all lifts up. Yeah. And what size the, motor? The, the motor's in the, in the center of it, in oh. the back, in the back. The motor's oh, not okay. in here. So when this lifts up, you've got some storage area in here. Oh. I also have a toolbox in here. And you always want to have plenty of tools. And I have played with a few. This is actually my fourth side-by-side uh, -side that I've acquired. And I've had the Arctic Cat, and I think uh, I had a Chinese BMT or BM, BMA or something they call it. And I had one of these and something else. I can't remember that one. But by my comparison, the reason why you want this size is particularly if you're turning the outback of Idaho, you got a uh, restriction on the width of your vehicle can be no more than 50 inches. Otherwise, you'll see a lot of these guys that are running around in these what do we call side by sides or quads. And a lot of times, it's they're looking for speed. When you're looking for that speed, they're, they're doing a high tech development of something that's going to cost you over thirty thousand dollars. So we, I reiterate the point about what it's going to cost. You're dealing with about thirteen thousand five hundred dollars with your extras. Now you're also going to need you can either put an electric or a manual windshield wiper on it. When you're okay. in a cold weather condition, you've got to be able to clear that window out so you can see what's going on in that. Okay. You also need to set aside mirrors and a oh, center they, mirror. They don't come with it either. They don't come with it either. Yeah. Okay. And I put a GPS unit in here that I do a stick old job on the window, and I, I get this now issued old guy outdoors <laughs> geezer squad, squad <laughs> emblem on my windshield because I've been officially indoctrinated yeah. into the geezer club. He's in the ge geezer club, <laughs> yes he so, is. From well, there, let's, let's let's talk about the tires. What size tires come well, with it? Th these are all stock tires. Okay. And they're uh, you got the rears that are going to be uh, I think 50 inches wide. The front are going to be 48 inches wide. You got a little more traction. You can see the width of that rear tire. A little narrow in the front. Great suspension. Easy all day. I mean, I, I'm I'm typically driving this thing, exploring the backcountry, maybe three hours a day or something, and I'm I'm driving this thing maybe 25. 25 mile an hour is good, it'll go faster, you don't need to go faster, but it'll handle all those rough road conditions that you're used to following on the back backwoods areas. Yeah. And it, it, I mean, it makes your truck yeah. feel like it's uncomfortable to ride in, because yeah. this thing just takes them like crazy. And so, you, it, let, let's keep, let's just move around it here. And so you've got a winch, and you put your own winch on, correct? It well, they typically can, will mount that for you if you want, if you say, have, include me a winch, and they can, but it would be extra. It's extra. Yeah. Okay. Now this is a Warren winch. Okay. That's kind of top of the line winch. Yep. And that, I think it's a 3,500 or something like that, or 3,000 pounder. But I think I had this thing about three days before I used it. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a snowstorm and drove it off with the back wheels running into a ditch. And I snatch locked myself to a rock and pulled myself out. Now there's a lot of concern about the potential of rollover because of the height of these things. So you need to be thoughtful about what you're doing. When it feels uncomfortable to you, question what your judgment is about going further, and then deal with that. So are these air cooled, water cooled? These are uh, air cooled, and okay. yeah, and, and what it has a radiator in so it. So it's a radiator. Yeah, so you get water -cooled. cooled too. Okay. But under the bottom of the thing, critical when you buy it. Now they, for this price, you should typically get a completely shielded bottom. Sheet okay. metal or steel plating underneath there. I'm going to try to show you his his plate here. And that is critical because you are going to run over rocks. You only have about 10 inches of clearance. It's still under it, isn't it, there? Yep. <laughs> it's still under there. <laughs> That's good. Okay, the, the windshield has the ability to lift up, and it must lift up, otherwise, you can't gain access into your hooded area there. And I literally have a pretty large. Uh, like a tackle box full of tools that I think are going to be necessary, whether it's fuses and tape or wrenches or oh. a hammer and all that, and crescent wrenches and stuff like that that are in there. And, but the windshield, when it does lift up, it gives you, when you're on the road and it's hot, it'll give you enough air. But obviously, you have all kinds of different drivers out here, and some sure. of them fly down the road at 60 mile an hour. Uh, the doors and the safety guards nets, yeah, this, are they included or is yes. that an extra purchase? No, the, the doors, that's a good thing about the Honda, it comes with the doors, it comes with the seat belts, it comes with the safety net. And ideally if you keep everything locked down, 
the tendency that you have when you feel like you're becoming unstable, if it actually is going to go over, your tendency is to feel like you ought to put your foot out. Well, yeah. that's going to take care of that leg for a while. Yeah. If you'll be able to keep it. But the, underneath the seat, okay. the seat storage underneath there, that's where your oil and or your gas is, and your oil access for checking to see the level of the oil in your engine all the time. And you want to check that every now and again. But your gas, I think it's holding eight gallons. And I, I rode this thing for a while, and I'm still trying to figure out what I'm actually getting for mileage on, out of it. But I'm going to say, uh, with this tank, uh, it, it, at, at about 20, at, at about 20 miles to the gallon, and you have wow. that much, that's about 160 miles. Wow. That you could actually go with this with a, with a tank. But I always keep a spare tank out, and... Yesterday was no exception. One of my guys ran out of gas. <laughs> so, okay. And that's what you have to ask again. Now but, this is a two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive? Two and four. And the good thing about this Honda thing is when you, it's on the fly shift. Okay. So when you're, and you don't have to slow down or stop. Uh, if you can be doing maybe 10 or 15 mile an hour and shift that thing in, that'd be pretty fast over in a really rough road. But if you're doing, say, you know, four to five mile an hour and you need that four-wheel drive, you click it in, it's instant click goes right in and goes I have not had anything that looked like I could go up and not be able to do it and I but I'm a bit cautious because often I, I pack my wife and a dog in here yeah <laughs> okay manual and automatic transmission also. right and, and that feature gives an automatic shifting as it's going along but it's absolute when you're in the manual mode you're looking at shifting into into first, second, and third, fourth, and fifth, you got five gears. If you go to the uh, automatic mode, it'll go into a drive mode, and then it'll it, it'll go into a, a second gear mode on the next shift. So you lose that number one, okay. which is your lowest gear. But that's picked up into your manual, and you just flip that right into where you want it, and shift the shift, and you're ready to go. And it's got a paddle shift. And the shifting. shifting's right here. Yes. And yeah. in this Honda, particularly to go into reverse, you have a special situation. You have a little bar right underneath here that you must pull that back you know, and have your foot on the brake when you put it in reverse. Otherwise, it won't click in. That's a safety feature. That's a safety right? feature. Yeah. And then your, your left paddle will shift it into reverse. And uh, it will downshift your other five gears when you put it in on the right, right on. side paddle. Right yeah. So, and then, like I say, here's your little manual wind, uh, windshield wiper that's in there. But in the toolbox is a supply of wood you should always have with you in the auto. I mean, I'm I'm equipped to get stuck for three days here. Yeah. <laughs> in the outback, I mean, you got blankets in here, rain gear in here. I got a, a air pump for the tires in here, jack in here, star lug wrench. Some tools in here, but most of the tools are in the front. The tailgate will not drop down with the rear wheel rack. Right. You'll have to pull that off. Now, because I had a kind of a strange life where most of I made good money off of people that lied to me. I do, I do that too. Though. I, lock, <laughs> I lock up my spare so, tires too. Yeah. Lock up everything. Yeah, yeah. Don't leave a gas can. And I have always a, a saw. An axe and a shovel, and I usually always, because we go pretty remote with these things, I always have a chainsaw for blowdown. Right. So that you can right. cut your way out. So it's got tail lights, headlights. It says headlight and headlight, but no, but no signal light. But no signal light. Right. Some and states will allow you to drive these things, like a Wyoming in place. I, I know I see a lot of them on the road. And, but if you're, if you're going to be legal, you, you ought to have tail light signals. Right. And that's an aftermarket kit. You can put on it pretty easily. Okay. Pretty so most most monthly can do it pretty right without a real problem. And and the bed is the bed will handle it. I think it's 800 pounds. Uh, but you know, I, but, I, but I got a, a lot of equipment in here most of the time. It's a stock item though. Yeah, that's stock. Yeah, it comes yeah, with it. Comes it. comes regular with okay. that. Okay. No tilt bed or anything like that. It is a tilt. Oh, it is yeah, a tilt you, bed. You'll have a lever right here. That you pull the lever and it'll pop it back. Now it won't pop back as long as that spare tires. Well, it. sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure. But it also has seat belts in it. Yeah. So they you, and you should use that application when you're in the outback. Yeah. yeah put your seat belt on and make yeah. that thing work. But it, you know, it's fundamentally. And now I've got about 800 miles on this thing, and it has been trouble free. Wow. 
I haven't had any issues with transmissions or anything. But I, I, you know, you get it serviced regularly, and when you get the manual for this, it'll tell you how many hours you should be driving it before you bring it in to get it worked on. Okay. From your local. And now this rear window that you bought, it's an add-on. It's but an add-on. It's it's made by Pioneer and. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, it an uh, uh, a Honda deal? Pioneer rear window. Okay. It's, and it so it open. would be stock. It's just an add-on. Yeah, it's an add-on. But without that, you can see the dirt that's on here. Yeah. We've only been out here playing a week. Yeah, yeah. But it would be all over you. You yeah. would no longer have that. But it unzips also, huh? Yeah, it unzips yeah. and all that. Yeah, nice. But this would keep you from uh, having your aging appearance of having gray hair. <laughs> you would have kind of dirty blonde hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, I'm in a scheme of what you see what you do. You yeah. were with us on yeah, yeah. the road and, and yeah. you saw the value of having the width of the tire and the power of the machine. Okay, I, I've had a couple of these machines and I had a uh, 700 but it was a wider width and I realized that both for transport and hauling and all of that, for me, to have a trailer behind me and my machine in my truck, this was the valued machine. But I haven't had an occasion where it, it would it was underpowered, but I would like to see it have a little more power only for the reason That it would be less labor on the engine But I have not been up anything that I was willing to try that it wouldn't take me Well, I'll tell you I, I mean I rode with these guys today and it seemed like we had plenty of power Anytime we needed it. I I, I didn't see any lack of power and it'll turn itself around, but you better must be conscious of uh, of the tilt factor, particularly on your well, sure. second person. If it really gets in the lean, you got a compounding weight element that could could tip you over. But that doesn't take you out of service. In the right. back of this thing, there's a snatch block and a and a and a come along that would I could just hook onto this top of this and pull this thing right back up at any tree that I'm along on. <laughs> so there's no problem. Or you could use your winch to do the same. I could run that winch out here to a snatch block, hook under this, and whip this thing right back up on its wheels. Have you had to do that? I have never had to do that yet. Oh, thank God. But, uh, yeah, yeah but, but that's something that you got to think about. Sure. You, and, and inside of here is like like I was telling you, you got to have overnight equipment like matches, fire fire sources, anything that's in there, blanket, water waterproof gear, and I'm not talking stuff at Walmart. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. good water gear because yeah. you could get pretty pretty severely wet in this yeah. thing and I, particularly I, if you don't close the doors I do that I, I carry that stuff in my backpack when I fish yeah when I walk along a creek for a while I always have fire starter emergency blankets yeah, you never stuff, know when you're gonna go in a first hole first aid kit yeah, yeah you don't know so yeah and the first aid kit is a good a, is a good point too yeah that's a and really I, smart I also idea. keep on a magnetic little thing here yeah a tire pressure gauge so okay. if I look at my tire and I say hey is that thing really going down any I can check it and then play with it. But if, if it were to go down with a nail, that's easily fixable. A yeah. rock, uh, I don't know about that, but well, because it it's tubeless. It depends on if it's a slice or a puncher. Right. A puncher you can do on the road, but the, hence carrying the spare tire. But the, uh, like I reiterate the other point of, of having a, a, a bottleneck jack in these things, it doesn't take much. You know, a little two ton jack doesn't cost maybe $15. Yeah. But when you get that bottleneck jack on there, you take the pressure off that tire, it reseals itself oh. in, the, in the tire changing process. Right, right, right. So that you got that. Yeah. So that, that's kind of a capsulation from an owner and a user so about we, a product that you might have reservations about because there's some of them that do not hold up to this standard. Huh. Honda has an engine, that's for certain. What size engine is it? This is the 520, 520 cc. 520, okay. Yeah. But Hence I would like to, Pioneer if I was to recommend to <laughs> these guys, I'd like to see them go to a 700 or the 570. I have a 570 Polaris that'll blow you in the hat off. Yeah, but wouldn't a 570 in this size be a little much? No, not a 570. Okay. My 700 in this size might be a bit much. Oh, okay. But the 570 is 50 more horsepower. Yeah, okay, yeah. Or 50 more cc's, excuse CCs, me, not yeah. horsepower. Yeah. But if you get that uh, there is CC, all I'm always trying to do uh, is uh, consider 
the engine wear factor and what's happening and how much heat is, is coming. Now in the summer, if it's hot and you're in here, it's hot in here because you get engine heat radiating up from the floor. So you can deal with that too, as a, as a matter of fact. Okay. But what, when you have this little window thing, it's got the ability to lift up and vent. Yeah. And, but like I said, you must have the ability to lift that windshield to pull off your rack. Now if you want to take a look at that, we can look at that for a oh, moment. Oh yeah. And I'm sure, I'm sure everybody would be interested in seeing how much room you got. But what is on this right now is because this thing has actually been field tested and proven to work. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. You, you got two release latches in there right here on the hood. And without that thing coming up, you can't get that hood off. So that one's up. That one's up. Oh, it pops wow. right out. Now you can wow. see the size of that. Now, what the heck is this toilet paper in here for? Actually, it's not toilet paper. These are dryer pieces of dryer patches to keep the rodents from eating your wiring system during the winter. Oh, wow. And I also note those are little cubes because them little critters love these places. Oh. If you park this in your garage, you know, Worcester. There's one in there. He's gonna. I, I, I can give you a story that would be unbelievable about my Prius in the garage. Oh my! God. Last year, ten thousand four hundred dollars worth wow. of rodent Chewing. damage. <laughs> Those guys ate my Prius. Oh! <laughs> and that's why you, you should have. That's what you get for owning a Prius. So. Yeah. Well, but the, these dryer <laughs> things have a scent, and that's what yeah. that's about. They don't and like they that scent. That. They don't like that scent on that, and, and then these little guys they eat them. And, and that's a poison, I think. That's it. a poison. Yeah, okay. And what I and one of the things that I learned when I was getting my you can go ahead and put that. And there's another thing now that they've got out, and I can't really test give a testimonial on the sonic devices, electronic devices, but there's supposed yeah. to be some legitimacy in that, yeah, and I maybe. don't know. I'm not sure about but that. But when you have like this much room, I mean, in here, yeah, there's right. everything. Yeah. I got tape and I got screwdrivers and wrenches and, and fire starters. Yeah, you and got tons of room. All kinds of stuff. And then uh, you fill and check your radiator there? Right or? there. Okay. Yep. Does it have an any? overflow bucket? or? It, it has. It'll blow it out. And I think you, Just you, got, you, the issues, you got your little tank down here. Oh, does it? Okay. Mm -hmm. It goes into that. Oh, yeah. And okay. on the other side. But without oh, your right. tools, you got to have your tools and you, and you always need those kinds of things. Now power steering, is this power steering or yeah, rack and pinion? Yeah, but it's generally, uh, it's a different concept of power steering than you might be attuned to because this is basically muscle power steering. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so, it, it's, so you it's have that rack with and, you all the it's time. It's rack and pinion, <laughs> kind of, right? Yeah, but yeah. it's it's really not uh, something that you say, oh, I notice this, it's difficult to turn. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very simple. Yeah, and the smaller tires uh, And the smaller too. tires, yeah. and it's, the whole unit is kind of small. All right. Good. Let's button her back up. Okay, here we go. And it's not real difficult to move that back into place. No, no. And, and like I said, I know what I got for tools in there, so I play with that all the time. And it's a good piece of ranch equipment, too. I mean, if a guy's yeah. playing with this stuff. Because it will handle that weight in the back. Okay. I don't have a tow hitch on because I got a tire on. Right by your door there. Yes. Just stand right by your door. What? Just just stand there and face me. And then. Hi, you... mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that in there. Uh, would you recommend this vehicle to anybody? Or... I would recommend it. And again, I reiterate the point. There's no money involved with my comments that I'm making to the old guy's promotion to this issue. <laughs> This is just from a user's perspective. But you had no problem and you'd None. buy another one? Would you buy another? If this one, for the some reason, I, it, went The only away, reason I would replace this would be for a larger engine. Okay. But the same size same and style. the same brand. And what, uh, they they, yeah. they kind of wrote the book on what's happening with its automatic shifting and all that stuff. Yeah. And that's pretty good. Yeah. And I've had, like I said, four of the machine. And this dog and I right in it all the time and it's very comfortable hang on i gotta get you all in there okay this, this is cisco and this is carol oh no wait a minute this that's is, cisco and this is carol 
<laughs> All right. Well, this dog these are and I ride in this vehicle with him all the time and As opposed we to are my horses. very comfortable yeah i i witnessed it i i we, me and another guy followed him down uh tim and and uh, he gave me a ride in his and what a what a deal so uh do you have anything to say in closing well but like we've talked about in casual comment you know how you're going to get this thing in the field is going to be a decision that you have to make. Yeah, either in it, the back of your truck, your which truck, or a trailer, something like or that. Or a trailer, or, but yeah. And okay. if you have a, a, obviously if you have a travel trailer or something that you're pulling behind you, then you have to figure out how do you make the components work. Sure. Good situation to be cautious and safety minded <clears throat> is spend your money on your ramps. Yeah. Don't buy the cheap thing, or you'll be looking at yourself through some screen in the hospital. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us to another video. Um, we hope you uh, liked this one. I hope it was informative. Please leave a comment down below if you've had one of these or want to know more about it. Uh, thanks to, to Mel, and Carol, and Cisco for letting us uh, do this video on this uh, machine. And uh, please like and share our videos. Hit that subscribe button, that bell notification, and until next time, remember, life's a gift. Get outdoors. See you now. Bye.